بيان كيف يؤخذ علم الدين clarification of how the knowledge of the religion is taken وأن العلم بالتعلم لا بالمطالعة and that the knowledge is by learning by being formally educated not by reading اعلم أنه يجب على كل مكلف أن يتعلم من علم الدين قدرا لا يستغني عنه كل فرد من المكلفين Know that it is obligatory on every accountable one, every religiously responsible one to learn an amount of religious knowledge that no single accountable one can do without. Yani every accountable one, not a single one of the accountable ones can do without it. There's an amount of knowledge that every accountable one cannot do without it. وَهُوَ يَنْقَسِمُ إِلَىٰ عِلْمِ الْعَقِيدَةِ وَعِلْمِ الْأَحْكَامِ And that knowledge divides into the knowledge of the creed and the knowledge of the rules. That means some of the creed, the basics of the creed, and some of the rules, the basic rules, and whatever you need or want to do. There's basic rules that we all must adhere to. We all have to pray and make purification and fast, etc. And also whatever else is relevant, such as if you want to get married or you are married, then what are the rules then? And the like. Maybe someone is not married and not interested in getting married. So then he wouldn't be obligated to learn about that. If someone does not have money, he wouldn't be on a personal level obligated to learn about zakah. فَمِنَ الْوَاجِبِ عَلَى الْمُكَلَّفِ مَعْرِفَتُهُ And amongst what is obligatory to know, obligatory on the accountable one to know, وَعَتِقَادُهُ and to believe in min umuri al-aqidah from the matters of the conviction is al-imanu billah belief in god wa bima jaa'a 'ani llah and believing in what came from god that means believing in what he revealed that's the first thing the sheikh mentioned for us some Muslims are under the impression that this is very not important for some people. We call them Muslims if we didn't hear blasphemy from them. If they claim to be Muslims and we didn't hear blasphemy from them. But when it comes to the matters of the creed, they say, why are you talking about this? This is basic. Or some people will flip it and they say, why are you talking about this? This is too advanced. This is the first thing one should learn. وَالْإِيمَانُ بِرَسُولِ اللَّهِ And belief in the messenger of God. وَبِمَا جَاءَ عَرْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ And believing in what came from the messenger of God. صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ كَمَعْرِفَةِ الشَّهَادَتَيْنِ Like knowing the meaning of the two shahadas. So that's general. Knowing the general meaning of the two shahadas. وَصِفَاتِ اللَّهِ الْوَاجِبِ مَعْرِفَتُهَا And learning the attributes that are obligatory to know, the attributes of Allah that are obligatory to know, that's more specific than the general meaning of the two shahadas. Learning the attributes of Allah that are obligatory to know. 
wa tanzihihi ta'ala amma la yaliku bih and learning about God's exaltation from what does not befit him and that's even more specific than learning about the attributes that need to be known that comes along with that wa nahwi dhalik and the likes of that like learning about destiny wa tasdiq ar-rasul muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bi kulli ma jaa bihi an allah and believing the messenger muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yani verifying what he came with believing in that bi kulli ma jaa bihi an allah believing in all of what he came with from Allah yani whatever he conveyed of the revelation whatever revelation he conveyed one has to believe in that min akhbari al umam sabiqa such as the news of the previous nations wal ashya allati tahsul fi al barzakh and the matters that happen in the grave wa yawm al qiyamah and what happens on judgment day or believing in judgment day aw tahlil shay'in aw tahrimihi wa nahwi dhalik and such as the legalization of something or the illegality the religious illegality of something the religious legality of something and the religious illegality of something and the likes and that's important of course it's obvious that's important but what happens is that until a person learns this knowledge he would be accustomed to the customs of his society and then there would be many things that he does not realize that they're bad because he hasn't learned and he would think they're okay like what like copyright like what like a lot of the entertainment industry much of the entertainment industry is invalid like what else like for the muslim to take certain jobs like being a butler for a non-muslim or being a maid of a non-muslim and things like this things that without the religious knowledge he wouldn't think that there's anything wrong with it so it's important that a person learns so that the person can have what's called mizanun shar'i a religious scale a religious scale so that he weighs matters by religious standards not by cultural standards وَمَعْرِفَةِ الْأَشْيَاءِ الَّتِي تُخْرِجُ مِنَ الْإِسْلَامِ and knowing the things that take one out of Islam كَأَنْوَاعِ الْكُفُرِ like the different types of blasphemy and why would one need to learn that كَيَجْتَنِبَ so that he could avoid it he would learn that so that he could avoid it ومن الواجب معرفته من الاحكام معرفه احكام الصلاه and amongst what is obligatory to know of rules is knowing the rules of prayer like how to determine the prayer times without the calendar the calendar is not knowing how to determine prayer times maybe someone's been a muslim for decades hasn't learned how to tell the prayer times and how to determine prayer direction not by a compass not by a phone app by looking at the signs of allah the sun and the stars and the likes of that it's really elementary knowledge and how to recite al fatiha properly min shurutin wa arkanin wa mubtilat whether conditions of prayer like purification wudu ghusl istinja 
removal of unexcused filth. And also included in that is what? Learning rules of menstruation and the different types of vaginal bleeding. Very important, especially for the woman, of course. But it's important for the man to learn that too, so that he could teach his women or the women and learning the integrals of prayer, how to bow, how to stand, how to prostrate, how to recite Al-Fatiha, how to sit, how to recite the Tashahud, how to say Assalamu Alaikum, how to end the prayer. Well, Mubutilat and the invalidators of prayer, like speaking in the prayer and other things that are invalidators of the prayer. And learning about purification and the likes of that. Those are basics, as you know, brothers and sisters. Those are basics. But many people, they haven't mastered those basics. Many people really have been hearing the knowledge for years and years. They haven't mastered the basics. I know brothers and sisters who sometimes they ask me a question. I knew them for years, Yanni. Yeah, Yanni, maybe a decade I knew them. Sometimes they ask me a question, and I feel sad that they're asking me that question. But... Yani, I'm going to answer them if I know the answer. And some people have teaching position and they don't deserve it. They're not qualified. And these matters are not taken by reading. They are not taken by reading them from books or reading them in books. That's not religious standard for learning. That's non-Muslim standard for learning. One would think that he has a lot of knowledge because he read a lot of books. And we know that a person would be very ignorant despite that he read many, many books. Very, very ignorant. Yani, you need tutelage. When you want to learn any field, you need tutelage. Yani, you need to study under someone. That's even true for the worldly sciences. Or else, although they do do it today, but or else you just, instead of going to university, you just get books and just read the books. But rather than that, you have university where you go and you learn under professors who teach you. But nowadays, even that, the education is very, very poor these days. We, brothers and sisters, we're doing this online interaction here. You need to know that it's, it's not the best. Online interaction is not the best. But thanks to Allah, we've learned well, and we have right religion and right knowledge. So at least we can pass the knowledge and receive the knowledge in a safe way. Now, think about people, yeah, I mean, maybe some of you might have your children in some online things. Very good chance that the ed their education is below inferior. Very, very bad education. Just getting stuff to read and some boxes to check and some uh, reports to write really quick. Very horrible education. لأنه قد يكون في هذه الكتب التي يطالعها يطالعها الشخص دس دس وافتراء دس وافتراء على الدين because it could be that there is in these books that the person's reading perversion and lies against the religion, that perversion could be malicious or could be pure mistake, could be just typos. But if you're just reading on your own, you won't know. Or... It could be that the person, Yani, does not understand what he's reading. 
Yeah, and his understanding of what he's reading is contrary to what the Salaf and the Khalaf were upon. That's why someone who's thought to be a scholar would say it's obligatory on a woman to cover her face in public and then you tell him, La, that's not true. You don't have an ayah for that. You don't have a hadith for that. And then he would say, well, there's a rule. The scholar said repelling the corruption has priority over summoning the benefits. The scholar said there's a rule. Repelling corruption has priority over summoning benefits. And then he would say, therefore, it's, the woman has to cover her face to repel the corruption. Uh, where did he get that from? He got it from his pocket. He misapplied something that he read. He didn't even learn it from anyone, but he turns around and teaches it to people. Stuff that he never learned, he turns around and teaches it with corrupted understanding. Or other things. I had another example in my mind, but it slipped me now. Uh, so, He would understand something different from what the Salaf and the Khalaf were upon. The Salaf, those are the predecessors, the early ones, the first three generations of Muslims for the first three centuries, and the Khalaf are all the subsequent generations. What they have been transmitting, generation after generation, he would not understand it properly because of reading. Yani, he took what appeared to him from his reading in books. Yani, that even, this mistake here is not only for the most common layman, it's even for those who have studied an amount of knowledge. We have seen people who studied some amount of knowledge. And so you would think they were knowledgeable and they know how to talk like they're knowledgeable. But what happened? They got full of themselves. And they said, I can read in these books. And then they start reading in books. And then they get mixed up. I remembered now the other example I wanted to give you. Like, for example, a person, let's say, maybe he learned even. Could be a case that he read and didn't understand what he read. Or maybe he learned, but let's say he didn't graduate. Let's say his education is deficient. And then what? And then he would say, oh, if you doubt that you committed blasphemy, you know something is blasphemy, but you, you're doubting if you did it or not. You're not obligated to say precautionary shahada because the doubt, according to the scholars, is 50 50. Uh, so, here, this is a great blunder on this person's part. Whether he misunderstood something he read or because his education was deficient, he did not have enough, he did not have enough kuyud, he didn't have enough rules and uh, parameters. So, he applied something that either he read it or possibly heard it but with a deficient education and a deficient understanding, and he applied it where it doesn't apply. And then he falls into a great blunder, and then he argues with the people of knowledge because he thinks he knows something. And then that person would perform an invalid worship due to his corrupted understanding just because he read on his own or what or he would fall into comparing allah to his creations because he was reading without having been educated reading in hadiths 
without having been formally educated. He does not have the proper background knowledge or reading ayahs of the Quran without having been educated. And so he likens Allah to the creations. He sees something and then he says, oh, if you do this, then Allah will come to you jogging. And if you do that, then Allah will come to you skipping. And then Allah will come to you running or something like that. He would say, because he read and he didn't learn. And then he'll turn around and teach it to others, although he didn't learn it. He'll turn around and teach what he never learned. For us as Muslims, what we take from the books is not something we learned. But there is a chance that a person has a good enough education that he could read in some books and have enough education to not be to not fall into blunders. So we're not saying that if you read books, you're not going to understand, you're not going to get anything. Yeah, the books are beneficial. But most importantly, you need to have religious education. When you see someone tell an ignorant person to go read, then know that that one, he's ignorant too. Or he's not a good educator. If he's not ignorant, he's not a good educator. When he tells an ignorant person to go read, or he would fall into some other type of blasphemy or misguidance. Like those who say, yes, dua, it does change destiny. I read it in the hadith. He didn't read that in the hadith. Yes, I did, he would say. No, you didn't read that in the hadith. That's what you understood from what you read. The dua would literally would say supplication uh, deflects or wards off destiny. And if it did deflect the destiny, then that was destiny. So no, you didn't read in the hadith that Dua changes destiny. Rather, you weren't properly educated and you misunderstood what you read. And no matter what, even if none of that were the case, he didn't misunderstand, he didn't fall into kufr, he didn't do invalid worship. It's still not the way to learn. It's not the way of education that has been made the curriculum by the Salaf and the Khalaf. قال الحافظ أبو بكر الخطيب البغدادي said حافظ أبو بكر الخطيب البغدادي أحد كبار المحدثين one of the elite hadith scholars لا يؤخذ العلم إلا من أفواه العلماء. The knowledge is not taken, but from the mouths of the scholars, from the mouths of the learned men and women. And it's permissible for a man to learn from a woman. And it's permissible for a woman to learn from a man. But if they're marriageable, let them not do that in privacy. Not even for learning the Quran, not in privacy, not even for the Quran. Even la buddha min ta'allumi umuri din min arifin fiqah. Therefore, it is inescapable. There is no alternative to learning the religious matters from someone who knows and is reliable. يَكُونُ أَخَذَ عَنْ فِقَهُ And that one will have taken the knowledge from someone reliable. وَهَكَذَا إِلَى الصَّحَابَ So on with the chain back to the companion of the Prophet ﷺ. So one thing to look out for, brothers and sisters, are the people who, they have some amount of education. These ones are most dangerous. They have some amount of education, so they know how to talk, but they're not strong, really. And let's say they're not Wahhabis. 
So that adds to the confusion for some people because they would be people who are thought to be Ahlu Sunnah, Ashairah, or Maturidiyah. And they have some amount of knowledge in amount that enables them to know how to talk. But really, they're very empty, very weak in some of them weak in all fields. Probably if you tested them, they would fail. Test them in the basics. Don't be shy there. Let me test you. How many integrals of wudu are there? Just give me a number, according to the Shafi'i school, for example. And how many integrals of salah? And how many integrals of ghusl? And how many invalidators of wudu? And how many things make ghusl obligatory? And, 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 if you want to have a clue, it's not guaranteed, but a clue that a person is weak, even though he seems strong, then see how many references he gives you. Like someone who talked about a matter that's above his pay grade, and really it's clear that the matter is above his pay, his pay grade, except for the people who might be enamored or who are fooled by way of speech. How is clear? Because it just conveniently leaves out all references and all names. He has no name to give you. The scholar said, you have to be careful there, because we say, the scholar said, the people of knowledge say, the scholar said. But then some ignorant person who's just learned a little bit, and he knows how to talk the talk. Then he says, the scholar said, and he doesn't give you any names, and he doesn't give you any books, any references, nothing. No ayah, no hadith, nothing. That's a problem. That's how you're going to get confused. Don't let someone tell you, some scholar said, don't let someone tell you, some scholars said Ibn Taymiyyah didn't commit kufr because of how he arrived at his mistake. And conveniently not give you any references for this. And then what happens throws many people into confusion when people are confused. Now the phones are ringing off the hook. What, how, how what's going on? How, what, huh, huh? Confusion, confusion, confusing the Muslims. Call about the Salaf. Some of the Salaf said, Alavi Yahudul Hadith Amin al Kutubi Yusama Sahafiya. Whoever takes the hadiths from the books, he's called a sahafi, a page flipper. And the one who takes the Quran just from the mushaf without learning, then he's a mushafi. And he's not called a reciter. He's not a qari of the Qur'an. Those nice reciters of the Qur'an, they had to have sat with a teacher. Once, I led a prayer somewhere many years ago. So the guy who was behind me, I recited Al-Kafirun in one of the rakahs. I don't know what I recited in another rakah. So after that, he said, MashaAllah, did you learn that from a recording? said, no, I learned from teachers. And then he was like shocked. وَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ And the messenger of Allah صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ said مَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا يُفَقِّهُ فِي الدِّينِ Whomever Allah will goodness for him, Allah will give him comprehension of the religion. And merely the knowledge is by being educated, by learning. Ta'allum. Here, this word ta'allum that's in the hadith. What do you have? So in Arabic, you'll say alima. Alima. That means he knew, he knew. Then you can say, go to another form. You say, Alama, Alama. It means he taught, he imparted knowledge. Alama, he imparted knowledge. And then, if you want to express the meaning of receiving that knowledge that was imparted, 
you add a ta and you say ta'allama. Ta'allama. That's the verb for this word here in the hadith. Ta'allama. It means he learned. So alima means he knew. Allama means he taught. And ta'allama means he learned. What did the Prophet say? Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Innama al-ilmu bi ta'allum. Merely, only, the knowledge is by learning, by being educated. Wal fiquhu bi tafaquhu. And learning, yani, and the fiqh, the religious law, is by being learned, yani, by being taught. وَرَوَى مُسْلِمٌ عَنْ إِبْنِ سِيرِينَ أَنَّهُ قَالْ And Muslim narrated from Ibn Sirin that he said, إِنَّ هَذَا الْعِلْمَ دِينَ Indeed, this knowledge is religion. This knowledge is religion. فَانْظُرُوا عَمَّنْ تَأْخُذُونَ دِينَكُمْ so look into from whom you take your religion. That means your knowledge. And if it were heard from a scholar, some talk that is against the religion, then it is obligatory, it is the duty of who heard him to draw his attention. To draw his attention, to alert him to his mistake. As long as drawing his attention to that does not lead to a greater mistake, a greater problem, or a greater corruption. Allah Ta'ala said, You are the best nation, O nation of Muhammad, sent out to the people. تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَتَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ you bid the good and forbid the evil or yani, the munkar, the objectionable. وَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ And you believe in Allah. فَقَدْ مَدَحَ اللَّهُ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَىٰ أُمَّةَ النَّبِيِّ مُحَمَّدٍ صلى الله عليه وسلم بهذه الصفة. Allah in this ayah has praised the nation of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for having this description, for being like that. Allah praised the nation of Muhammad for being like that, forbidding the good and forbidding the evil. That's the, the, the description of the nation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as opposed to the children of Israel. They used to not forbid each other from forbidden matters that they used to do. And indeed, the God-fearing, advising scholar, yani the God-fearing scholar who advises the people, and he has concern for his own religion, he has concern for his own religious state. So many people are lacking that. So unfortunate. We find people arguing with the people of knowledge. When they get proofs, they don't take heed. If someone, I remind myself, if someone tells you, yani draws your attention to a proof that's contrary to what you said or thought or you were under an impression and someone gave you, a proof, then you need to take heed. Either you accept or at least look into it. Don't just throw it away. 
if you care about your own religion. So many times when some people want to object to me, for example, for a recording that I did, let's say. So they leave a comment. So I'll give them proof. And then what they do, they're just like, I never told them anything. And then they give another comment. And then they try to argue for a falsehood. I say to them, have mercy on yourself. They don't want to have mercy on yourself. But Allah Ta'ala deadens the hearts of whomever he wills. Allah Ta'ala will make you deaf even if you can hear. And he will make you blind even if you can see. And he will prevent you from comprehension even if you are sane. If he willed. <laughs> that scholar who is precautious. Yani careful. This type, this God-fearing scholar who advises the people and he's concerned for his own religious well-being and he's careful and precautious and he's afraid of Allah when his mistake is drawn to his attention. Even if it's in front of a group of people Ya'udu anhu. He withdraws that. He retracts that mistake. And he clarifies that for the people. I once uh, made a mistake in a video that I did. So Wahhabi, he caught the mistake. So he was so happy that now he has something. So he brought it to my attention. This is wrong. You made a mistake here. So... I had to look into what he was saying. He was right. I was mistaken. So I had to take the video down, cut the mistake out, and put the video back up. But, Yanni, because as if he thinks that, Yanni, he doesn't conceive, as if he doesn't conceive that a person is willing to retract his mistake, that he thought it was a big gotcha moment, as they say. And it wasn't a gotcha moment because... If I make the mistake, I told him, Khalas, yeah, I made a mistake. I took it back. You were right. That's a mistake there. I'm not going to sit here and argue with you if it's wrong. And he kept arguing with me even still. But his arguing with me was making me generate views on the YouTube. It was triggering the algorithm. The only way I could make him stop was, Yanni. I told him, look, you're triggering the algorithm. I'm getting so many views. So he stopped. فَقَدْ أَخْرَجَ سَعِيدُ بْنُ مَنْصُورٍ وَالْبَيْحَقِيُّ Ani Shabi and Nahu call Said ibn Mansur and Al Bayhaqi have produced a report from the route of Al Shabi that he said, Khataba Umar ibn al Khattabi. Umar ibn al Khattab gave a khutbah, he delivered a speech. Bahamid Allah ta'ala wa athna alayh. And he praised Allah in his speech. Wa call. And he said, Ala la tughalu fi sadaqi nisa. Hear ye, do not indulge in expensive dowries for the women. Fa innahu la yablughuni an ahadin. Saqa akthar min shay'in saqahu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aw siqa ilayh. For indeed, there does not reach me from about anyone, Yani. If it reaches me about anyone that he paid more as a dowry than what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam paid or was paid to the Messenger of Allah, Yani, on behalf of any of his daughters as a dowry. Then I will take the excess and put it into the Muslim treasury. So something Omar had that made him understand this, that this is how it should be. Now that's Omar ibn al-Khattab. Now, and this is, you know the story here. It's a mistake here. Like that, some ignorant person, Omar is not ignorant. But like that, some ignorant person is going to see something. And then his delusions will fly. And he'll take hold of them as he flies with them. 
and then he will come up with a rule. And then you tell him, where do you get that from? Lisa Haka, that's not like that. There's no such rule like that. You made that up. Say, la, it's in the hadith. Here, what Umar ibn al-Khattab said, it doesn't even have any base. May Allah raise his rank. This is Umar ibn al-Khattab. He made a mistake that has no basis. ثم نزل. Then he came down from the pulpit. فعرضت لهم رأه. And then a woman stepped to him. من Quraysh. A woman from Quraysh. فقالت. She said, يا أمير المؤمنين. O Prince of Believers. أكتاب الله تعالى أحق أن يتبع أو قولك. Is the book of Allah more deserving to be followed or what you say and according to a narration she said Allah grants us and Umar ibn al-Khattab denies us he said the book of Allah ta'ala what's that all about she said you just forbade the people from extravagant dowries for the women. Wallahu ta'ala yakul. Yakulu fi kitabihi. Although Allah ta'ala says in his book, and oh men, if you gave those women as a dowry a heap, a whole heap, a whole pile of gold, then do not take back any of it. Umar. So then Umar said, Yani, he knew his mistake. And you know, so he doesn't like that. So he said, "Kullu ahadin afqahu min Umar marrataini aw thalatha." He said, "Everyone knows better than Umar." Twice or three times, it's like a word of remorse and regret and disappointment in himself. It's like he's disappointed in himself for saying the wrong judgment. Then he went back to the pulpit. And he said to the people, I had forbidden you from extravagant dowries for the women. Hear ye, let a man do with his money whatever he wants. So he retracted his mistake. May Allah reward him. Some people also, they said, how is it that we have learned from our sheikhs something? And then we would learn later that that was wrong and we have to fix something. How could this be? And this happened more than once. How can this be? So my answer was that if this happened, then that's a good thing. What do you think about someone who learned for, let's say, 20 years, 30 years, and his teachers never retracted anything? Do you, does it seem likely to you? Do you think his teachers have taught him correctly for 30 years without making a single mistake that needs to be retracted? If you experienced that, that you learned something, and then it came from, you know, word came, you know, uh, directive from the sheikhs, the higher sheikhs came saying, spread to the people that don't do it like this, do it like this. And then it gets spread the correction. So that means that you're learning properly because we're going to make mistakes from time to time. May Allah protect us. What do they call that? Human error. Human error. So a mistake will be made and then 
But by the help of Allah, we had people who were humble enough to admit their mistakes and then correct their mistakes for us. So Alhamdulillah, I had to give this answer, as I remember, twice. Both times it was a satisfying answer. Unless you want to go find someone who's never going to correct himself. He's going to teach you 100% correctly 100% of the time. And then you'll see on Judgment Day if, if that were the case. قال الحافظ اللغوي محمد مرتضى الزبيدي في شرح الإحياء ما نصه حافظ the حافظ and the linguist محمد مرتضى الزبيدي said in the explanation of إحياء وعلوم الدين quote واستماع العلم النافع في دينه ودنياه وفي الآخرة أفضل من اشتغاله بالنوافل بالنوافل من الصلوات. He said, listening to the knowledge, that means seeking. Listening meaning seeking the knowledge that is beneficial in one's religion and beneficial in his earthly life and beneficial for him in the afterlife is superior to being occupied with voluntary prayers. And mentioning voluntary prayers here, as opposed to any other voluntary worship, is significant because the voluntary prayer is the best voluntary worship. The obligatory prayer is the best obligatory worship, after belief, of course. And the voluntary prayer is the best voluntary worship. So learning religious knowledge is superior to sunnah prayers. فَقَدْ رَوَى أَبُوْ ذَرِّنْ جُنْدُ بُطْنُ جُنَادَةِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ أَبُوْ ذَرْ جُنْدُ son of Junada, May Allah accept him. Reported عَنِ النَّبِي صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ From the Prophet, may peace and blessings be upon him. إِنَّ حُضُورَ مَجْلِسِ عِلْمٍ أَفْضَلُ مِنْ صَلَاةِ أَلْفِ رَكْعَةِ Indeed, attending a session of knowledge is superior to praying 1,000 rak'ahs. Sunnah rak'ahs, that is. وَفِي خَبَرٍ آخَرٍ And in another Report La Ayata Allama Ahadukum Baba Minal Ilm for one of you to learn a chapter of knowledge. Oh you alimahu or to teach it is Khairun Lahu Min Salati Al Firaka better for him than praying a thousand rakas of Sunnah prayers. قيل يا رسول الله it was said oh messenger of Allah ومن قراءة القرآن it was said oh messenger of Allah even greater than reciting the Quran أيضا قال he said وهل ينفع قراءة القرآن إلا بعلم and would reciting the Quran benefit without knowledge انتهى end quote so there, if you have the drive to study and you have the drive to also pray sunnah prayers, then if you want, split your time up between study and prayer. And if you have the drive to study and you don't have the drive to pray, then study because anyway, being busy with the knowledge is superior to the sunnah prayers. So it's a very high reward for you. Even in the night, you know how you get up to pray at night? Tahajjud, very high reward. If you studied the knowledge, that's like praying tahajjud. And if you don't have the drive to study, but you have the drive to pray, then pray. But make sure you acquire the obligatory knowledge. Wallahu a'lam will stop there. Question, does a... Does a woman have to cover her feet when praying if she is alone? According to the Shafi'i school, she has to cover all of her body except her face and her hands from all directions except from underneath. So her feet's like the rest of her body, uh, even when alone. Yeah.
covering for the prayer is not a matter of covering for the sake of the people who can see you. Covering for the prayer is part of the obedience to your Lord. That's how he accepts our prayer, for us to cover ourselves. He doesn't accept for us to pray in nudity. Is there any other question I can answer for you? Are the prayers valid if one has prayed without covering her feet? Not in the Shafi'i school. And the Hanafis, they have some other rules, but I don't know the Hanafi school well. I just made a mistake the other day talking about the Hanafi school. So... Now I'm going to be say much less about the Hanafi school than I have before. So I don't know all their details there. But for Shafi'i school, it's not valid, even if she didn't know, even if she didn't know, because ignorance is not an excuse. And that's a very important principle. When one believes firmly in this truth that ignorance is not an excuse, then one will be careful and mindful. If one believes that ignorance is an excuse, then that itself is a great door to be oblivious, to be heedless. You say, oh, I didn't know. Oh, I didn't know. Oh, I didn't know. On Judgment Day, the people will be shocked when they see their book of deeds. The person didn't know that this was haram and that was haram and this was invalid and that was invalid. There will be people, they will enter their graves without any prayers. No prayers, imagine, even despite that you put effort, zero prayers. There will be people who enter their graves and they're not even Muslims. They thought they were Muslims all their lives. It's a very serious matter. When the person is concerned for his religion, it's a very serious matter. I don't think some people think about themselves in their graves. I don't think they imagine themselves in their graves. And here, I'm not talking about doing sins. I'm talking about religious knowledge. I'm talking about arguing with the people of knowledge, people who don't have any sort of education, very small knowledge, and they will argue. Even if you give them a hadith, they'll still argue. You give them an ayah, they'll still argue. You give them quotes, and they'll still argue. I had to block someone. He kept arguing with me. I think I know who he was too. A very strange person. He told me, do you, have, do you have any scholars who said what you're saying? I gave him like 10 references. Then he keeps arguing with me. And I told him, well, why don't you address the references that I gave you? No, he's not going to address them. He's still arguing with me. I don't think those people think about going into their graves. Or I don't think they're concerned about their religion on a personal level. He said, if one wants to start memorizing certain religious texts, can we memorize and practice on our own and get a teacher to listen to us? Yes, you can. And it was, uh, I heard, Yanni, it reached me that someone would go to Sheikh Abdullah wanting to take a book from him. And he would tell the person, memorize the book and then come back. So when the person comes back having memorized, then the Sheikh would teach him. Also, uh, when I studied overseas, Sometimes they would make it a requirement to get into a course that you've memorized an amount of the text. So that means on your own, you're going to go and memorize that. Amin wa fikum. That was, at, at least at my time, I don't know if they're still doing it, that was a requirement to get into al ibn Malik in grammar. We had to come in order to get into the course. You had to come with 200 lines memorized out of a thousand lines. Amin wa fikum. He said, kind of off, but for the new Muslim, do they need to repray their prayers if they made wudu while wearing nail polish? Yes. Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Taqabbal Allahu ta'atikum. May Allah accept your worships.